in life, there's often things that are overlooked, things that we just didn't take, pay attention to. We didn't notice. We didn't see. How many of you have made the mistake of going the wrong way on a one-way street, not noticing the one-way sign? Uh-huh. How many of you have engaged in maybe a little aggressive driving? We'll call it speeding. Uh, you've driven a little bit faster than the limits may be, and you're like that one who was speeding down the road, and the police officer pulled her over and said, I've been waiting for you all day. And she said, I got here as fast as I could. <laughs> we may be like those kind of people that overlook all kinds of things. We may say to the teacher on a test, I didn't see all those options, those multiple choices. I missed that. I didn't see what was there before me. Uh, you may have found that you're uh, looking for all kinds of things in life, but we just don't notice them. We overlook them. So it is true that in our life that we may find these things out there that are just jumping up and down saying, see me, see me, look at me, look at me. Well, today's text, it's a story filled with all kinds of things that are saying, see me, see me, take note, learn from this wonderful story, the metaphysical lessons and all that are all that's available for us. It's crying out to us to awaken in our spiritual journey. Yet so often the story, because it's swept into the Easter celebration of a holy week, we overlook all the small nuances and the powerful messages that are found within this text, the story of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. We find there that there are all kinds of volumes, shall we say, that speak to us, messages, lessons to be learned. And we're going to highlight a few of those today. So I hope you will not overlook any one of them, but join with me as we look to them. Now, the story unfolds as Jesus has this bizarre idea of going to Jerusalem. You may have read the story, be familiar with it from Sunday school or from your background, or you've read the Easter stories of the beginning of Passion Week, the Holy Week today in this text. Jesus' idea of coming into Jerusalem was controversial. Even his own disciples discouraged him, saying, I don't think this is a really good idea because there was quite a bit of opposition rising up towards his ministry. Jesus had been teaching a powerful uh, uh, teaching that we were there to live out the power of the divine from within. And the religious leaders of the day and age were wanting to embrace a spirit of judgment and control over them, saying, we live by these physical laws. We live by these moral laws. And Jesus teaching, but you live successfully by the spiritual laws. And you see this great conflict there that was rising, that there was tension for Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. Yet he moves ahead and goes into Jerusalem on this wonderful, what we call a triumphant entrance. Now what we see here is that Jesus so often had a different view, a different point of view, a different way of looking at life. He sees the world from a different perspective and teaches us to do the same. The first thing that we want to note about is this is why would Jesus even think about doing this? Yet he saw from a different outlook, a different perspective, a different vantage point, how he would live his life. And this lesson starts off the journey of our own spiritual life. How important it is that we may embrace uh, a new perspective, a different perspective, not limited to seeing the world from one perspective or one outlook but saying that there are multiple ways I can look at this. And certainly in the realm of the spiritual, there's possibilities unlimited. This is so powerful for our lives where we're realizing that we can then look to the world from a different view that is engaged in a higher understanding. It's not something mystical. It's not something magical, but very practical. And what we want to embrace first and foremost is the practicality of Scripture. The practicality of truth, the practicality of these ancient nuggets of great wisdom that are afforded to us, quite often overlooked, but so practical for application within our lives, so filled with the unfolding of the positive outcome for us. They're showing this is the pathway, this is how it works for you. So it is that Jesus began to see from this different view, which is crucial to the success in our life, how important this is. A different view is crucial to the success in our life. You're looking at any scenario in your life. You're looking at several, all kinds of things. This past week, uh, Robert and I and our doctors decided to forego any kind of chemo treatments. 
And people are like, oh, no, are you giving up? Is this, you know, uh, he has stage four cancer, uh, but yet it has been non-life threatening. But we just said we want to choose a different view because the chemo that was uh, being administered was so debilitating for him, making him sick and nauseous. It would hit him so hard this past week that he was almost in, unable to walk, unable to feed himself, and it was just getting worse and worse as the days went by. I said, you know, if this continues, I can't leave him alone. I'm going to have to have some nursing care or something to assist him. And it was a result of the chemo. So we made this decision to say, chemo no more. It's a different point of view. And the doctors were intrigued as we began to talk. We believe in the power of great faith. We've exhausted all of your resources, your ideas, and your creativity, which we greatly appreciate. It's not that we're negating the power of today's medicine, but we were seeing that it's, that alone was not helpful. And it was causing more of a challenge. We said we want to live life from a little bit different viewpoint, a different vantage point of looking at how we see the unfolding of healing and health and wholeness. And they applauded this wonderful spirit, this great attitude and great faith in saying we have seen over and over again when people take on a different view in life, a different view about the healing journey within their lives, that great success happens and unfolds. That there's a power within us. It's a different way of looking at life. Now, many people responded and thought, oh, is he are you giving up? Is it the end? This is the beginning. It's not giving up. It's calling forth that wonderful belief that we know, that we know, that we know that God is at work. And we're looking at things from a different outlook, a higher consciousness. Because for us to live the highest and best in life, we must go to the highest and best. You see? We've got to go to the power and presence of the divine. What is this highest and best that we talk about? Well, the highest is rising to the high level of consciousness and understanding, rising up from this lower level that's full of limitation to a higher level that is saying it's liberating and free, rising to a higher understanding and a belief that says all things are possible, not all things are limited and full of challenge. You see, there's a difference there. And so when we want to rise to the highest and to the best, our very best is the fulfillment of our, our, our good and perfect state within us. To rise to that, we've got to go to the highest and best. And God is the highest and best. God is this infinite realm of possibilities. God is this infinite place of power and presence. God is this wonderful, all-knowing uh, intelligence that's at work with us. So we go to the highest and best to experience our highest and best. We must live from this different view that really is the basis of this Palm Sunday story that we look at. For to do great things, you have to have a greater view. To do great things, you have to have a greater, larger view. And Jesus saw a larger view than those of the limiting thoughts and ideas of followers and disciples and those around him those religious leaders of the day, he saw this infinite message that I say is infinite in that it's spreading out in power and in might. This message that he had come to share with this world, this powerful teaching, he saw it not from a sense of that, that there were any kind of challenge that he might face would stop it, stifle it, end it, or destroy it, but only that it would just manifest in greater ways as he began to have a greater view. Where you see, Jesus saw it one way, but the people of Jerusalem saw life another way. The religious leaders kind of expected Jesus to ride into Jerusalem, maybe on a, a white stallion, coming in in, in the, the image of a challenger, coming in with the image of those who would walk in great pride and sort of ego and self-focus. They expected this because they saw Jesus, one who proclaimed, I'm the Son of God. Oh, they thought, how blasphemous to even proclaim that to have this kind of crazy idea that you are one with God, that you are an heir to all of God's goodness. This crazy idea, we want to say anyone who would come with this kind of idea has got to be full of arrogance, full of pride. So the expectation would be that Jesus would march in in some sort of triumph of arrogance, proclaiming, look at me, I'm the son of God. But instead, he actually beat them at their own game and chose to ride in on a donkey, symbolizing peace, symbolizing that sense of humility instead. 
he saw it in a way that writing in that was uh, a different way of projecting his message than what was expected. He again presented a different view that this is not a message of arrogance. To say that you are the child of God, to say that you are the son of God, to proclaim that you are an heir with God, heir of all of God's great things, is not an arrogance, but a true realization of who God made you to be. And so it is that Jesus began to project this sort of powerful message for the world. And our, quite often, that as the world looks at what Jesus did, they pass their own interpretations from their own perspectives onto things. And so quite often we think, well, Jesus would have certainly, he's going to come in on a big white horse, and he's going to come in in proclaiming in great arrogance and pride. And what was that really saying? He was really saying more about the religious leaders of that day and age. And quite often we too learn, they have to learn this lesson, that we project onto people from our perspective of what we're thinking, what's going on within us. And so we interpret our world based on that perspective that we offer. But when we begin to center ourselves in God, when we begin to have this sense of humility and humbleness that says it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, by the spirit and presence of God, that great and mighty things are accomplished. It's not a sense of ego anymore. It's not a sense of self and pride. It is a sense that we acknowledge the power of God working in and through us. How different it is when we begin to look at the world from that perspective. Because quite often we pass onto people our own ego, our own judgments, our own issues, and frame the experience we have with them based on that. Now, when we change all that, wow, we change and we change the perspective. We begin to look with great humility upon others and say, the God in me sees the God in you. The Christ in me sees the Christ in you. The love in me sees the love in you. The grace in me sees the grace in you. And begin to see the world from a totally different perspective. We make these great entrances when we move in life. We move from ego, from self. We make great entrances into life. Here's one of the great lessons I'd love us to a capture today out of this text and story, not to be overlooked, is that when you are going to make a choice in life, always choose to ride the donkey. Let me explain. You see, the choice could have been there. Do I ride on chariots of gold? Do I make grand entrances? Do I announce to everybody, oh, look, I'm going to be coming. Everybody, please gather and exalt me. Uh, please, everyone, uh, I'm going to choose the best seat in the house. I want to be the one who's exonerated. I want to be the one who's lifted up. But instead, he chose the lowly donkey. He chose to embody this true message of peace and humility. For this kind of choice will always make you a winner. To choose from the basis of humility will always make you one who is lifted up, who is exonerated, who is the winner in life. When we walk in a sense of humility, no matter what challenges we may be facing, we project this sense of humbleness, not a wall of resistance or an arrogance, but we project this sense of humility within. So in life, when choices are there, always choose to ride the donkey. Make that be your choice in life because that soul is free from arrogance and self and self-focus. It's that soul that embodies the very message of Jesus when he spoke in the Beatitudes and he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall receive the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean to be poor in spirit? It means emptied out. It means the very translation of that was the essence of, I have released all of the self and ego. It's not about me. It's about the we in the world. It's about the wonderful message of us in the sense of oneness with one another. It's not about my pride, and it's not about my self ideas and issues, but it's what can be accomplished and work together. It is blessed, happy is going to be this person then who has emptied the spirit, for they then can receive the kingdom of heaven. Because once you've emptied yourself out of all this ego and self and all this focus about me, 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 and all this kind of ideas that get in the way and block the very goodness of God coming into your life, Suddenly you're able to receive 
to have it come into you. You're able to receive all that God has had for you. Blessed are those who are emptied or have poured out. Those who are are poor in spirit, meaning that sense that sense of a void and an emptiness there. It's not meant to be said that blessed are those who are in poverty. That's not at all at all. That's what it's talking about at all. But it's about an emptiness within our hearts and our lives that invites us then in life to always choose to ride the donkey. Yes, Jesus saw it one way, and people saw life another way. Jesus began to look from the spiritual realm where all around him the world kept looking from the physical realm. And so it is that too often they made mistakes and they missed out on so many opportunities. They didn't understand the lessons that Jesus was trying to teach because they kept trying to apply them in the physical mindset. Everything was from the physical. And we know within the physical realm there's all kinds of limitations. But we talk constantly about the infinite possibilities within the spiritual realm. So when we begin to shift and we begin to look at the world from a totally different perspective, everything changes for us. For this whole idea of looking at things from an earthly perspective is the very basis of an I can't mentality. Because we're looking constantly at each and every limitation. I have to tell you this that over the years of serving as your pastor, 19 years this year, there have been board members who have been great accountants and great um, uh, people of finances who told, pulled me aside and said constantly, this church will be bankrupt within X amount of months. I can remember that in the year 2000, particularly when I first arrived. One of the great CPAs that had looked at our books and said, there's no way possible that you can exist and continue to go on. I can remember in 20, 2003, particularly a board meeting where someone came to offer us great financial advice and looked at our reports and said, you can't survive. It's not going to work for you. It's not possible. You, you, the best options for you would be to consider selling, considering getting rid of your facilities, consider downsizing, all these kind of things. I couldn't believe all the messages we've heard in 19 years that say, on paper, it doesn't work. But in spirit. Where are we today? Look where we've come to. A wonderful place, a beautiful facility that we own, wonderful opportunities to share in ministry. But I'll tell you again, so often when we look on paper, it just doesn't seem to work out. You know why? Because paper and the physical realm will always see the limitations. But in the spiritual realm, it says something amazing is about to unfold. Something amazing is about to happen. And in the course of 19 years, I can't tell you how many experiences where we've been at the cusp of the amazing, where we've ridden the tide of a wave of something amazing ushering us into a new realm, a new way of God providing, God making a way, God opening doors. We, could, we need to tell these stories over and over again to constantly remind us that when we look from the spiritual, physical falls away and we see the possibilities that are there. How many remember the challenges we had with a leaky roof in our former building? Oh, the, it was like a sieve some Sundays. And I remember many times we had large buckets out there to catch the water coming through the roof uh, and, and roping off sections on rainy days like this today. And we had wondered, were we going to ever have the funds? Will we ever have the money? How would we be able to do this? And we went to the bank and said, the bank said, I can give you only $165,000. Well, the roof alone was going to be, uh, you know, eighty thousand dollars just in itself. The other renovations that we wanted to do, the facility, there was just not enough money. It was not going to be possible. And then what happened was a wonderful tropical rainstorm came through called Hurricane Ivan. And as it came through, it went through and caused all kinds of challenges for our building, and it was flooded. And the beautiful thing is, the insurance company came forward and said, by the way. We're going to remodel and renew your whole entire building. What do we get? We got a whole new roof. We got brand new carpeting, all new painting, every room refreshed, a brand new sanctuary, all kinds of blessings. Wait, wait a minute. That wasn't on paper, and that wasn't seen in the physical. But through the eyes of faith, great things unfolded for us. You see, the world around kept looking at Jesus and saying, I want you to liberate us from the Roman occupation. 
in the physical realm. That's where we will find our greatest liberation. We'll find our freedom. And Jesus kept saying, it doesn't matter whether you're occupied by Rome or not. Your liberation is within. It happens in the spiritual realm. Oh, but give it to us. Be our king in the physical realm. We want you to be our leader, to be aggressive against Rome and to be an opposition. And they kept calling out constantly, looking for Jesus in the physical and not the spiritual. When our eyes shift, we see a whole different view, a different world. We begin to act not from limitations, but from possibilities. Too often we make the mistake that of living and looking at life always from the literal expressions or the literal terms. And what jumps out of this story is this different view of seeing life from the spiritual, not the literal, not the black and white, but looking into that realm of imagination that says all things are possible for us. For Jesus enters Jerusalem and meets this crowd then that are waving palms and yelling, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What is this that we need to make sure that we grasp out of this that we don't overlook? Well, we don't want to overlook the fact that what is this great proclamation that the world says? Blessed, happy, to be celebrated is the person who enters, who makes an entrance, who comes, who moves through life in the very character or the name, the, which means the character, meaning the understanding of the divine. Jesus embodied this, and the whole world, even though they could see things from a literal perspective, even though they were limited in their view by the physical realms, even though they wanted something that Jesus was never intending to offer as a liberating king, he embodied this wonderful message for them, and he began, they began to see, blessed, happy is this one. Happy is this one. Contented is he. We want to shout it out in great praise and celebration. And they began to see what was deep within the message of Jesus. Even though they didn't quite understand it to the fullest, they just said, he comes in the character of God. When's the last time someone said to you, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Blessed is Carla, who's come in the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Blessed is Dr. Alan Williams, who's come in the name of the Lord. Great to see Larry, who's come in the name of the Lord. We may look across this room. When's the last time someone said that? Where well, you've embodied so much the character, the goodness of God, that people could see it when you walked into a room, when you made an entrance. As you moved through life, people would say, I see the character of God. I see the very love, grace, and mercy. I see all the essence of all that is the goodness of God, and I want to celebrate it. And I proclaim, blessed are you. Blessed are you as this example for us. Now we look at palms and we think about Palm Sunday and we're celebrating and everybody's got a palm branch symbolic of this because why did people wave palm branches back in the ancient times? Well, palm branches were a wonderful tribute of greatness and celebration. Palm branches were also there when they saw and symbolized, it symbolized goodness. In other words, I see something great, let's celebrate it. I see something fabulous, let's celebrate it. I see something wonderful in my world, let's celebrate it. I want to honor it. I want to pay tribute to it. Solomon's great temple on the walls were painted the pictures of palm branches, of celebration that as you enter into the temple, you might enter into goodness, a celebration of goodness. When's the last time you waved some palms when you saw some goodness? When's the last time you recognized goodness in the world and celebrated it? Because too often our language, it gets to be so that we are celebrating all the woes and all the challenges and all the problems in the world and all the things that can go wrong. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, we one of the beautiful things is we sit down and we haven't got anything to talk about, so we talk about how bad the weather is. It's too hot in the summer. It's too cold in the winter. It's too rainy on rainy days and it's too sunny on sunny days. And we just constantly can always talk about anything but the goodness of what's transpiring. I want to invite you to see in this text that the invitation is that people acknowledged goodness and began to wave the palms in celebration. So too, within our spiritual life, we're called then to say, I can see goodness because I look for goodness. When's the last time you really spent some time saying, I'm looking for goodness and I see it. Turn to one another and look and see 
You say, I see some goodness. I see goodness there. I, my goodness, there's goodness there. I see it all around me. And I acknowledge that goodness and I celebrate it. Because this is another great lesson of making this triumphal entrance into any space as you move through life. Is to celebrate someone else's goodness in the journey of living. We elevate the world when we celebrate the goodness that we see around it. We lift it up and we elevate it. We bring it to a higher level. We raise it into the Christ consciousness of awareness when we celebrate. So in life, I encourage you to grab a palm and wave it. Symbolically and metaphor within your heart and life, say, I'm waving palms because I celebrate today the goodness that I see in the world around me, in one another, and the very presence of the divine all around that I say, blessed is he, blessed is this, blessed is that, that's coming and moving in the realm all around me of the goodness of God. It's blessed is it. It's so wonderful to see it and experience it and talk about it and proclaim it. I want to be transformed by it. So let us look at this beautiful lesson of an entrance into a triumph into Jerusalem, into the realm of peace, symbolized by that word Jerusalem. As we look in the metaphorical studies, we understand the symbolism, the city of Jerusalem being that house of peace, dwelling place of peace. As you move through this world, make sure you look at the advice that's offered in this beautiful story. One, to walk into the realm of peace, it's really important that you have a different view. It's crucial. It's crucial that you have a different view. The world may offer you all kinds of stuff, but what's your viewpoint? Is it different from the, is it there in the spiritual realm? To live our highest and best, well, we've got to go to the highest and best. Don't miss this key element here. To live the highest and best in our life, we've got to go to that place, move to that place. You can't live the highest and best in the realm of just being right where you are in the physical with its limitations, but rising up, elevating, ride into your place of peace with triumph as you move to the highest and best within you. When you make life choices in life, always choose to ride the donkey. Remember that. It's a powerful lesson. It's one of sense of great humility and humbleness, an emptied spirit that says, I remove all arrogance and pride. I let go of all those things that can be obstacles because when I do, I receive the fullness of God, the kingdom of God. I feel it rush, ushering in. It comes into my life because I chose to ride the donkey. Then think beyond earthly terms. In all of life, move beyond. Every scenario that comes to you, when people come to you constantly, time and time again, know that you speak the word of faith that says, I see and live from a viewpoint that is not based on earthly terms, but grounded and founded in the spiritual. And people say, oh, how crazy that is, how you live. But wait a minute. Did we not say in the opening that we are physical beings, but we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, not physical beings trying to have something, but we realize who we really are. So our vantage point needs to every day be not grounded in earthly terms, but in the spiritual, we live and we speak these words of great faith. And lastly, when you see goodness, grab a palm, celebrate it, wave it high, shout it out in many different ways. For when you see goodness, it's worthy of being celebrated. And when you celebrate it, it ignites this triumph within your own life and takes you to that higher place. Amen.